ठीक है ना Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our worship service for Parkminster United Church. Whether you're here with us in the sanctuary or joining us virtually, thank you for being here. We're glad that you're with us, and we hope that you find a sense of community and spiritual nurture in this time as we begin the Lenten season and celebrate the sacrament of communion this day. As we light our Christ candles this Lenten season, we give physical representation to the truth that we are not alone, that God is with us. I invite us to light our candles together at this time. Let the, low, the glow of these candles illumine our path. Let them illumine our inner life. Let them be for us the light of Christ in the world. And at this time, I'd like to invite Elmer Robertson to lead us in our statement of what? Good morning. I'm Alma Robertson, and I will be sharing Park Minister's statement of welcome. As we come together as a community of faith for worship, hear these words of welcome. In gratitude and with respect, we begin by recognizing the First Nations on whose traditional land we make our spiritual home. The Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, and the Neutral. We acknowledge with regret that this history has rarely been respectful. We commit to just relationships in the present. <coughs> Excuse me. Along with First Nations everywhere, we recognize Earth as our mother, upon whose water, air, and soil we depend for our lives and our well-being. In the midst of a climate crisis, we acknowledge that as a species, we have not acted with respect for our precious planet. We commit to learning and practicing better stewardship. Seeking true community, we welcome all who have no church home, need strength, and are seeking deep meaning. Welcome to those who have doubts or who do not believe. Welcome to those whose faith is sure 
and to those who believe but who are asking large questions. Welcome to visitors and to familiar friends. Welcome to grandparents, to mothers, fathers, youth, and children, couples, and single people. Welcome, <coughs> well, <coughs> Welcome to people of all colors, gender identities, abilities, and sexual orientations. Welcome to each who is seeking an understanding of community and what it means to accompany one another. As we come together as church, we hold one another <clears throat> in gratitude and pray that we will be strong together, faithful together, and loving together. We seek blessing as we welcome the great gift of spirit in us, through us, and among us. Thanks so much, Elna. Uh, so some announcements this morning before we move into our worship time together. Uh, for those online, if you have an announcement you'd like shared this morning, just type chat into the chat, or announcement into the chat for me, not chat, and I will invite you to share that in a moment. Uh, just a reminder to those on Zoom that if you do have any technical issues, please alert the AV team by sending them a direct message in the chat. And Joe is going to paste some instructions if you're having some audio issues that give you some tips for that. For those that are with us here today, as you came into the church and into the foyer, you probably saw the beautiful prayer shawls that are on display. Uh, those are, are such a wonderful ministry that we have here at Parkminster. Please take a moment to pause on your way out if you didn't on your way in. And just know that at any time, you're welcome to take one today if you or someone you know might appreciate one. But they're also available in the family room as well at any time. And a big thank you to everybody who so lovingly and prayerfully creates those for us. Uh, as mentioned a little bit earlier to the folks here, but to everyone with us this morning, we are celebrating the Sacrament of Communion a little bit later. Hopefully those that are with us in person were able to pick up the little communion prepackaged cups and wafers. Uh, if you didn't get one, they're just in the narthex. And for those at home, we just invite you to use whatever elements you have on hand so that we can all come together as community and celebrate communion on this first Sunday of Lent. Joe, you have a couple announcements, so I'll turn things over to you. Yeah, so I did uh, put the uh, link, for those at home, I did put the link to the um, volume instructions in the, in the chat that were prepared by Sue McQueen. So I just want to point out to people who are at home that the controlling your volume on your computer and controlling it on Zoom are two different things. So following those instructions are key if you're having volume difficulties. Uh, Jennifer Allen isn't able to be with us uh, in uh, worship this morning, but she did ask me to just reiterate the message that was sent out via email this past week. Uh, the COVID-19 working group considered changes to our policies in regards to worship and building use in light of provincial government uh, regulation changes around COVID-19. The working group came to some decisions, but decided that these should be recommendations that go to council for consideration given the scope of the issues discussed. Council will look at these at its next scheduled meeting on March the 15th. The working group is feeling positive about its recommendations and the impact on our community life. For now, however, our policies stay the same until council meets. An update will be forthcoming immediately following the council meeting. So that's from Jennifer Allen, and she says thank you for your patience and support. Okay. Did you do want to share one more announcement about that Lenten study that we're beginning? Oh, right. Okay. Uh, so this coming Wednesday, um, the our Lenten study called a Lenten pause uh, continues. It's it's about the first session is two hours, but subsequent sessions will be an hour and a half, and it's just an opportunity to deepen our spiritual lives. Uh, during this uh, time in Lent, and we'll be viewing short films on uh, five short films on the Stations of the Cross and reflecting on how that informs our own Lenten journey at this time of year. So if you could let me know uh, via email, phone, or if you're at home, you can just put your name in the chat and let me know that. Wonderful. And I'm not seeing any announcements uh, online via Zoom this okay. morning, so we can move to the joys and concerns. Yeah, so if you have 
Um, we are doing, uh, having communion, celebrating the sacrament of communion today, so we're doing the joys and concerns a little earlier. If you have a joy or a concern that you'd like to share and you're here in the sanctuary, just please come up to the lectern and, um, and share that uh, uh, with us. Uh, and of course, at home, um, just put it in the, uh, in, in the chat. Just wanted to share, you might, uh, I have not seen that um, a former moderator of the United Church, uh, Bill Phipps, who had a big impact on a lot of people's spiritual journeys, um, passed away uh, the other day. And so we hold um, his family in our prayers and uh, his legacy we hold as well. Absolutely. And we, we had shared last week that Laura Ford is in hospital with COVID. Uh, I think I saw her join our Zoom, which makes me very happy. She is off the ventilator, and that's wonderful news and is making improvements. So just hold her in our prayers, Laura. We're glad to see you with us online this morning, and that's just really wonderful news yeah. to share. And of course, well, uh, we can share a blessing that Ellen posted in the chat. Mm -hmm. uh, Ellen said, good morning to all. With God's help, I have reached my 63rd birthday today. So... Happy birthday Happy to birthday. Ellen Scott. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Any other prayers uh, or blessings that you'd like to share this morning? They'll likely come in after we That's move on. okay, but you can <laughs> you can take those into prayer. Okay. So yeah, why don't we Do you want to share that loving God prayer? Sure. Okay. So friends, let us take um, the blessings and concerns we've shared and um, the ones we haven't shared, the ones that are just sitting on our hearts right now. Loving God, as we begin our time of worship this morning, may these prayers of blessing and concern weave themselves into our worship, into our praying, our singing, reflecting, our eating and drinking, that we may surrender completely to grace. Amen. And so let us continue our time of gathering with our opening hymn. a song of praise to the maker the thrush sings high in the tree it's a song of praise to the maker the gray whale sings in the sea and by the spirit you and i can join our voice to the holy cry and sing 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 It's a hymn of life to the lover, the bumblebees hum along. It's a hymn of love to the lover, the summer breeze joins the song, and by the Spirit, you and I can join our voice to the holy cry, and sing, sing, sing. It's the chorus of all creation. It's sung by all living things. It's the chorus of all creation, a song the universe sings. And by the Spirit, you and I can join our voice to the holy cry and sing, sing, sing.
So friends, as we come before the stories of our faith and as we look to hear the word of God, a word of love for our lives and for our world, let's just ask for some help with that task. Holy One, who gave fully of your own self, reveal to us once again your vulnerable presence. Reveal once again to us your daring compassion. Reveal to us once again your path of kindness. Reveal to us once again in the words of Scripture your challenge of faithfulness and sacrifice. Amen. Our Scripture reading uh, this morning is taken from Luke's version of the Jesus story, Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, verses 1 to 13, a paraphrase from the work of the people. Now Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wild. For 40 wilderness days and nights, he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when the time was up, he was hungry. The devil, playing on his hunger, gave the first test. Since you're God's son, command this stone to turn into a loaf of bread. Jesus answered by quoting Deuteronomy, it takes more than bread to really live. For the second test, he led him up and spread out all the kingdoms of the earth on display at once. Then the devil said, they're yours in all their splendor to serve your pleasure. I'm in charge of them all and can turn them over to whomever I wish. Worship me, and they're yours, the whole works. Jesus refused again, backing his refusal with Deuteronomy. Worship the Lord your God and only the Lord your God. Serve him with absolute single-heartedness. For the third test, the devil took him to Jerusalem and put him on top of the temple. He said, if you are God's son, jump. It's written, isn't it, that he has placed you in the care of angels to protect you? They will catch you. You will, won't so much as stub your toe on a stone. Yes, said Jesus, and it's also written, don't you dare tempt the Lord your God. That completed the testing. The devil retreated temporarily, lying in wait for another opportunity.
Well, well thank, thank you, you so much, much to Neil and the choir for that beautiful reflective piece to bring us into this time and to Xander for his always his gifts of music that he shares. So we have now moved from the season of Epiphany into the season of Lent. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. These are the words that many of us hear at an Ash Wednesday service as we begin our Lenten journeys. And in her essay, In the Barren Places, Debbie Thomas notes that on Ash Wednesday, clergy impose ashes on our foreheads, say these challenging words, and invite us to face a bewildering paradox. We are beloved of God, and we will die. The first truth does not prevent the second. The second truth does not negate the first. And she continues, this week, as so many of our siblings face the terrors and losses of war and violence, we are once again asked to consider what it means that we, all of us, regardless of where we live or what political views we espouse, are small, mortal, vulnerable. And in many ways, this is the same reality that Jesus wrestles with in our gospel reading this morning. At his baptism, Jesus hears the truth about his identity. He is God's child, precious and beloved. But when the Spirit leads him into the wilderness, he has to face a series of powerful assaults on that truth. He has to learn how to discern God's presence in a bleak and lonely wasteland. He has to trust that he can be both beloved and famished, valued and vulnerable at the same time. He has to learn that God's care resides within his flesh and blood humanity within a fragile vessel that can crack and shatter. And so we observe the Lenten season, and some of us may choose to take on or give something up, because it gives us a chance to step outside of our day-to-day -day existence and look deeply at the lives we are leading and the choices we are making. It grants us the opportunity to reflect on where and how God fits into our lives and the ways that our faith could grow and be strengthened. Lent also makes space to think about the sacrifice that Jesus made in a grace-filled, life-giving kind of way. This is the invitation of Lent to learn that we can be loved and be hungry at the same time. That we can hope and hurt at the same time. The deprivations of the wilderness teach us that when God nourishes us, the nourishment won't be manipulative and disrespectful. It won't necessitate a violation of God's good creation. The food God gives won't necessarily be the food we would choose for ourselves, but it will feed us nevertheless. And through us, if we will learn to share, it will feed the world. This morning we heard the story of Jesus' time in that wilderness. And if Jesus' 40 days in the wilderness is a time of self-creation, a time for Jesus to decide who he is and how he will live out his calling, then here is what he chooses. Emptiness over fullness. 
obscurity over honor, vulnerability over rescue. At every instance when Jesus can reach for the magical, the glorious, and the safe, he reaches instead for the mundane, the invisible, and the risky. The gospel tells us that Jesus doesn't choose to enter the wilderness. The spirit leads him there. But here's the thing. Jesus chooses to stay in the wilderness until the work is over. And if the past couple of years have taught us anything, we don't always choose to enter the wilderness either. We don't volunteer for pain, loss, danger, or terror, but the wilderness happens. And whether it comes to us in the guise of a hospital waiting room, a thorny relationship, a troubled child, a sudden death, or a crippling panic attack, the wilderness appears unbidden and unwelcome at our doorsteps. It insists on itself. Lent is about opening ourselves to be in that wilderness. And this is going to look different for each one of us. For some of us, being in the wilderness might mean working through something that we are already going through. Something that we're struggling with, whether it be a personal struggle, a physical or health struggle, a financial struggle, or a professional struggle. For some of us, being in the wilderness might mean challenging ourselves and pushing ourselves outside of comfort zones. And reflecting on the past month, this also speaks to our commitment to engage in anti-racism work and the call to live in right relationship, knowing that this means facing some uncomfortable truths and a willingness to do the work despite the discomfort. For some of us, being in the wilderness might mean trying something new or setting a different goal. For some of us, being in the wilderness might mean giving something up so that we have a tangible reminder every single day of this journey that we're on. I know it sounds pretty bleak, but here's the thing. The manageable piece of the Lenten season is that we all know that there's an end in sight. Lent lasts for 40 days, and at the end of our journey, there is resurrection. There are Easter flowers and joyous music and a rainbow of spring colors, all profound and bold reminders of the radical truth that God's love, in spite of it all, God's love always wins. We will make it through the wilderness. We go into the Lenten season knowing that it will end with an Easter morning. We will do the hard work knowing that even in the midst of our most challenging times, God is with us. We are not alone. So what does this mean for us as we begin our Lenten journeys this year? Maybe it means it's time to follow Jesus into that desert. It's time to stay and look evil in the face. Time to hear evil's voice, recognize its allure, and confess its appeal. It's time to decide who we are and whose we are. But remember, Lent is not a time to do penance for being human. 
It's a time to embrace all that it means to be human. Human and hungry, human and vulnerable, human and beloved. So blessings, my friends, blessings this Lenten season. May God accompany you on this journey. And this Lenten season, may you find the holy in the wilderness. May it be for you exactly what you need. And may your journey to the cross be filled with hope, strength, love, and courage. Remember that we are not alone. And may you find your own resurrection on Easter morning. Thanks be to God. Amen.
ongoing support of Parkminster and the Mission and Service Fund. Because you give, our ministries touch and change the lives of people at Parkminster, in our community, and beyond. Your gifts of time, talent, and treasure proclaim hope. And so let us pray. From all the places where we share our time, talents, and treasure, we offer you our gifts, God of grace, so they may become part of all the fruits of hope and of healing, of peace and patience, which you give to others throughout the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, whether you are with us here in the sanctuary or gathered at kitchen tables, dining tables, coffee tables, and TV tables, we come together as community, united by our faith, as the one table of Jesus the Christ. So let us begin. God is here. Always. Forever. Let us remember. With all that we are. In the beginning before there was a beginning, before there was even a before, there you were, God of all, you and the chaotic nothingness. And with your word, you brought being into being, all that was and all that is, and all that will ever be. And with your love, you gave creation life in all its fullness, life in all its complexity. Life in all its wandering confusion. DNA, RNA, one cell, many cells, things that fly, things that swim, things that waddle, walk, or crawl, things that move and have their being in you. And us, too. You gave us curiosity and wonder and stubbornness and spirit. You gave us hope and laughter and companionship and song. Thank you, loving God. Sometimes we have lived that life in ways that live into your desire for us. But sometimes, in our wandering, in our fear, in our times of loss or greed or apathy, we have twisted the gift. We have twisted ourselves 
We have twisted others, people, places, and things. But every time your love has sung out, urging us to wholeness, urging us to healing, urging us to right and loving relationship with ourselves, with others, with you. And so in this season of Lent, in this time of reflection, of penitence, of change, we commit ourselves again to listening prayerfully. We commit ourselves again to loving with abandon. We commit ourselves again to walking with Jesus the Christ to the, to the desert, to Jerusalem, to the cross, to the beyond. We commit ourselves again knowing that you walk with us, God of the deep places. So in memory and anticipation of the grace that has been and the grace that will be, we join to sing your praise. On the night before he died, Jesus gathered with friends to tell again the ancient story of liberation from bondage. Together with his friends, he shared a meal of remembrance and celebration on that Passover Eve. After surrendering so much to God's will, he knew there was only one thing left to give. As he had done so many times before, he took bread, and after having given thanks to you, holy God, he broke it. Then he took wine and poured it. And he gave both to the disciples, this time saying, do this to remember me. Jesus was then unjustly killed by the powers of his day, by those for whom love was a threat. As faithful Jews, he, his friends saw Jesus as being like the Passover lambs that God had once used to save Israel. Lambs that were sacrificed, whose blood adorned the doors of Jewish homes so that the nation of Israel could be spared the final plague before liberation from slavery. To some of his frightened disciples, it seemed that the broken bread was like his body and the poured wine like his blood. It also seemed like injustice and violence killed Jesus and his ministry. But there were more meals and more ministries. We give thanks, Holy One, that the Last Supper wasn't the last meal or the last word. His execution wasn't the end. His presence and ministry continued in a new way. Through this loaf and cup, Jesus lived within us. In word and deed, Jesus lives among us. At this time, we also remember all with whom you would have us share your feast, loving God. We bring those blessings and concerns shared at the beginning of the service into this time of prayer. We pray for all who are in sorrow and pain, all who are ill or alone, all who live with fear, oppression, or hunger, for all whom the world counts as last and least, for nations as they strive for peace and justice, for those whom we love and those whom we are challenged to love. We are reminded of our vulnerabilities in conflict, pandemic, and climate disruption. We hold in prayer the people of Ukraine, 
the Capuano First Nation in northern Alberta in as 169 potential graves of children were discovered this week. And we surrender the blessing and concerns of our lives in confidence, for we remember your boundless love for us in Jesus the Christ. So we offer you our praise as we proclaim in song the mystery of faith. Sing Christ has died and Christ is will come again. Seeing Christ has died and Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Holy God, we pray for your spirit. Make us while many one. Make us though broken whole. Make us despite death alive. And so we pray. Praise be to God, the source of love. Praise be to Jesus, love incarnate. Praise be to the Spirit, love's power. Praise be to God. Amen. Friends, there are many tables for communion this morning, but in reality, it is one table, the table of Jesus the Christ, the one who welcomed all to eat together regardless of their ability, their gender, their economic class, the conviction of their religious beliefs, and other ways that we use to separate and isolate. So if you hunger and thirst for what God has to offer you in Jesus, you are welcome at the table. For these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us eat and drink together. The bread of life broken and offered for us. The cup of blessing poured and out and offered for us. As we step into Lent, as we remember, reflect, and relive, you have fed us with your love once again. Help us to remember that we carry that love everywhere we go. Help us to remind the world you are present. And that we are never, ever alone. Amen.
Friends, the light of Christ that holds us together in worship goes with us as we leave this time and place. May it light the way for us as we walk the never-ending path of right relationship and union with God. God will continue to lead us out of the wilderness of oppression into the place of hope and healing. God will continue to teach us the way of repentance and forgiveness if we are open to God's instruction. God's wisdom is with us. In the scriptures, the sages of old, the lessons from the past, and in our hope for the future, if we trust it if we cling to it. Live into God's ways, be slow to judge and quick to forgive. Know God's forgiveness in your life and go forth to help repair and restore the world. You are forgiven, loved, and restored. Amen.
Yes, thank you, Neil. I don't know if you heard that at home, but that was a round of applause for Neil's um, host lute. And so our service uh, has ended. And so for folks here in the sanctuary, a blessings on a good week. Heather is um, at the back, uh, ready to to greet you on your uh, on your way out. Um, to our Facebook friends, uh, we're going to say goodbye at this time, and you're going to see me go out of camera here because I have to go over to Heather's computer and just stop the live stream right now, and we'll also stop recording at this time.